Welcome back to another episode of the Socratic Cinema Podcast. My name is Charlie Heatherly. I'm James Delisio. And I'm Casey Clark. And today we're talking about a, a movie, musical, whatever you want to call it, that's very near and dear to my heart. One of my favorite pieces of media of all time. I will say that right here, right now. It's Hamilton, baby. The phenom of the theater world. I love it. You guys better love it too, otherwise you're off the show. Uh, but just came out on Disney Plus. We're going to be talking about it today. All of the motifs, James has got you covered there. All of the cool dance moves, Casey's got you covered there. And then all of the nerdy folklore trivia, I got you covered there. We all have our little spots. I think it's going to be real fun. So, uh, what are your guys' like takes on on the Hamilton Disney Plus version? Because I know that James and I have seen it on on uh, the stage, but that's not what we watched, right? So, so how do you guys think it translated to a movie medium? Like, did, do you think they did a good job or was it a little like iffy? Um, I guess I don't really like to think about it as a movie because I think Hamilton's like narrative structure is not really very movie like, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's super long. It's like two hours and 40 minutes. Um, so I don't, I don't think of it as a movie. I, I like when I'm watching it, I think of it as I guess what it is just a recording of a, a, a stage play, but, um, I think it translated pretty well for the most part. You know, production value was up there. Good, nice, cool to see it. Like the original cast up close, the camera work and all that's great. I think there are some times where the translation from the very exaggerated like stage acting, seeing it so up close through a camera, I feel like is a little uncomfortable sometimes, but I'll talk about that later. Um, but overall, very enjoyable. It's cool that they made such like a hot exclusive show available to the public finally five years later so yeah overall no no complaints very enjoyable casey yeah i would say kind of similar to james that i thoroughly like enjoyed it i've been a hamilton fan like since it came out in middle school and i haven't seen it on Broadway or on stage, actually. And I am, as, like, a show choir kid, like, I'm very much a proponent for, you know, musical theater, and I highly believe that putting musicals out like this is honestly, like, the best move possible, and I feel like a lot more shows should be released in this kind of, like, format. Because I just, like, I think that theater should be way more accessible than it currently is. You know, especially with shows like Hamilton, where I'm sure that you can attest to how expensive it was to get tickets. Yeah, so definitely coming from, like, when I was younger and, like, wanting to go and see, like, a show on Broadway or just at, like, any old theater and then to have it come out like this in a way that you could actually, like, look at it and analyze it and not be in, like, nosebleed seats is honestly, like, really, really amazing. So, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, theater's kind of a very inaccessible medium now, now that I think about it. Like, it, it feels very locked away. Like, movies and stuff... I mean, in TV, it all comes to your home eventually, but but theater is kind of, you got to catch it when it's on production and you have to buy like tickets and, and it, it feels a little uh, inaccessible to a lot of people. So no, good, totally. on, good on Disney for doing this. I mean, like in an age of convenience and Corona, like going to places to see performances, uh, whether they be musical or theater or whatever, is like nigh impossible. Like, you're not going to go to see a concert anytime soon, right? So yeah. I'm so glad they recorded this before the pandemic and got everything out, you know, before this started happening. Because I think Thomas Kale knocked it out of the park with how he directed all of the movements of the camera. It felt super fluid and natural with the already amazing choreography that, uh, I, I forget the, the choreographer's name, that he and or she uh, had created for the show. 
and it all just felt like one thing rather than oh and here's our our or here's just a camera filming a show it yeah. felt like the camera was a part of the show like it was its own character and you really got where you said james you felt uncomfortable getting that close to people i felt like i got super intimate seeing these characters in like a new way that i hadn't even noticed when i saw it in person because you're so far away from the stage itself so yeah i yeah. thought it was super cool i i think that it has its strengths and weaknesses what i what i meant i guess we can dive into this because i mean it's a pretty nice topic is the of the translation from uh stage to screen what i meant by that is is i know for my very limited experience with like the theater world and stuff you have to act really uh, exaggerated right in, in in theater and and drama much more than you do in a movie because well you have to translate your performance to an audience who's pretty far away right backseat needs to be able to tell what's going on still and i just and so you have to be very exaggerated and i just feel like when when you see that level of exaggeration so close up it feels kind of over the top to me like it's mm. it's it's not like it's bad acting or anything it's just a different kind of acting it's theater acting in a film medium and it, and just it kind of clashes a little bit to me like it's it's not how you would act those scenes if it were a movie um so it just feels like a little bit of a, a conflicting conflicting mediums which scenes are, are you referring to specifically? Like the King George stuff where he was like spitting all over the place? Or Oh, that was kind of gross, but that's just... No, no I mean more scene, scenes where it's like high emotion. Stuff like uh, Hurricane or the, the Stay Alive reprise where it's very, these very like emotional And you scenes. thought that was overacting in those cases compared to a film meeting. That's crazy. Wow. It's, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, Lynn's not a great actor. <laughs> Everyone's been... What? Everyone's been bagging on him for that. Damn. Have you seen yeah. that online? How yeah. much like the flack hate against getting? Lynn is crazy. I don't know what it's about. He's like, a he's a musical genius, but uh, I think he's better at writing music than he is at performing it. Um, I, I feel like that's days. not an exaggeration. I don't agree with that. I think that that Lynn is is he, he's obviously not the best performer on the stage, right? But yeah. I think he knows his music really, really well, and he knows the emotion behind it. And when you're a creator performing your creation, it's very easy to draw on all of the feelings that you were experiencing when you made that song or, or, or whatever. And I, I think Lynn does a very good job of translating that to, into his performances. And he definitely, within a lot of his shows, he feels like the scrappy... He, he's always playing some sort of scrappy nobody who's trying to, to make his way up the ranks. And I feel like that talks about his life too. So he understands how to play those characters and and how they sort of have this constant drive and energy and he puts that into hamilton very very well and i think that i enjoy seeing him perform hamilton way more than i see any of the other uh hamilton leads in i'm just show. saying from a technical standpoint when you've got lynn next to people like leslie odom jr and uh chris jackson it's just not it's not even a competition dude i think leslie odom jr and chris jackson are the carries of this show they're incredible and um philippa sue love her performance as eliza yes. too. she that might have been my favorite performance actually in the show i think eliza is my new favorite character i would go for a i'd go for renee uh elise goldsberry is that her name the uh, the one that plays Goldsberg? angelica goldsberg, Gold, something. goldsberg. I think her first good. name's renee i'm pretty sure yeah uh, so I think she does a really good job. The, that's one of my favorite parts about Hamilton is the love triangle that you get there because it's so interesting to see the the marriage of someone immediately from a different perspective in the way that you yeah. see with uh, uh, Angelica and Eliza. Uh, and it it's, it's such an interesting show to have a, a complex plot line like that just be explained in two songs and you feel every little bit of it. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that all the actors do a, a pretty phenomenal job. I'm not the biggest fan of of uh, Leslie's voice sometimes, but that's just personal Whoa. preference. Fair enough, fair enough, actually. Uh, he, he does a really good job in, like, the song songs, but when he's talking, uh, sometimes his, his his voice just doesn't vibe with me, which is not, like, a, a, a critique on his acting or anything. It's just, like, you know, my fair ears, enough. lizard brain goes no-no. <laughs> but uh i can recognize that him and chris chris jackson's uh farewell at the end of a washington's address is perhaps one of the best moments of the show 
when he's physically like crying. He's like he's feeling yeah. all of that. He, he gets into it. it. Oh, it's insane. Um, it's insane. You know what I think the coolest part is about about being able to actually see Hamilton instead of just listening to the soundtrack what? is the stage and the, and the dancing and the, the ensemble adds a yes. whole lot to this performance, man. For uh, sure. I love the thing they do where they like well because the rotating stage is obviously really cool. That's like a, a neat gimmick in it, in it of itself. But yeah, I think it's really cool when they combine that and they have the ensemble like carrying chairs over their heads and, and it kind of looks like all this furniture is like floating around and spinning. It just looks really cool. Like they do that in Hurricane and when they're rewinding and satisfied, it's some very very impressive uh, blocking and performance and stage craft that has to go into all that and it's just really cool i i just love how that how that looks uh, the ensemble is great yeah i think hurricane is i think the best performed or, or best all-round song of the entire thing i think the choreography in there is arguably the best i think the the, the emotion in there is great i just think it's a it's a great performance but casey yeah. I'm, I'm i'm interested or, or no james you want to go no in no, no i was gonna i was gonna ask casey i was gonna say what do you think about hurricane because okay yeah, my perfect. family hates hurricane they it's like really? every, I, I always see memes that are like uh it's, hurricane's the only song i skip in hamilton <gasps> it's one of my it's been one of my favorites for so That's long blasphemous okay. when that. dear theodosia is right there are we kidding are we really? What, does gonna... anyone actually listen to Skylar Defeated all the way through, though? Like, that's a skip. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely... Okay, so I think the the high points in choreography for me personally were definitely Hurricane, definitely Satisfied, and, of course, Yorktown. Yeah. Because those are just absolutely... Like, including stage management, like, it's like the amount of practice like looking at it as a dancer like looking at the spacing looking at the timing looking at like the movements and the musicality of it like that is in like honestly like insane and the ensemble is amazing you know and i feel like in ensembles in musicals don't get you know the recognition that they deserve yeah but I feel like Hamilton did a really good job of giving the ensemble enough to do that they're highlighted in that. And that kind of sparked a, I, I guess we could call it like a trend of having ensembles have a bigger onstage role. Um, mm. The choreography itself is incredibly contemporary, which makes a lot of sense. Um and just with how the the cadence and the um like the beats and the hits and the pauses and like the like you can watch them um sorry i definitely went into dancer brain there um <laughs> no <laughs> go good go go yeah, for it's it. interesting as a dancer watching other dancers you take in the music obviously and like you're looking at the musicality and musicality is basically hitting where um the music tells you to hit and sitting and breathing where there are spaces within the music and i feel like they do a lot of um good incorporations of that because sometimes it can be very like you're hitting in the pocket or something like softer and it's very and it brings out the music and the soundtrack and like the backing like a lot more like aided with the choreography and i feel like the choreography like increased the enjoyability and i just yeah just the whole okay i was fangirling a little bit with satisfied in general because that when they hit that rewind and i know that it's um it's different when you're actually watching it because they use you know a whole bunch of different clips like I, I was actually watching a video where like one of them like some of the footage are from performances where it was recorded with like a audience and one of them was just without an audience so that they can get the close-ups and and you can actually see because in some of the shots Angelica has a flower on her dress and other ones that she doesn't within the same uh, and that's how you can tell oh, which ones are which that 
makes a lot more sense because it's it how it's like how are these not are the cameras not seeing each other that's crazy yeah and that was very helpful for me too because was like there is no possible way that there is a man weaving between these people going in reverse like the fact that they did an entire like choreo set for one song and then did all of it backwards <laughs> Or not mm -hmm. like that was absolutely like insane to me like fangirl moment definitely yeah and also i want to talk about like the spinning stage like i absolutely love the spinning stage like that is honestly like i think it's a hamilton like we could say that it's like a hamilton staple but they also used it in hades town and i feel like a lot of um people use the spinning stage now to either um like in hamilton it mostly uh represents or relates to time mm. while time passing or time um you know speeding up going backwards you know all that stuff and in Hades town it's more about like traveling and like mm. the journey you know and i was just like that's so crazy and it's really like amazing that you can get like down to the like planks of wood in the stage and have that like completely and utterly like ingrained in what you're trying to do with the production like you even see that with like Hamilton's not the first musical to necessarily do that like Spring Awakening had a lifting and dropping stage but it's not the same like effect as the spinning mm. stage and yeah. yeah I think that's my my <laughs> my rant <laughs> but yeah yeah the, yeah the spinning stage is super cool and they also have that um other thing that part that like detaches from the top and can rolls the staircase that rolls around oh yeah. oh yeah yeah, that's super fun too their set pieces were just oh immaculate. it's a work of art man didn't they win a tony for it i thought they won a yeah tony. i'm sure okay. they did they won bro that <laughs> one year they i think they just swept the tonys essentially pretty much hold on let me i'm i'm gonna look up Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Like, I think Hamilton deserves to sweep the Tonys, too. Like, I think... I've seen a bunch of musicals, too, so I can say this with certainty. It's probably the best musical ever. Like, I think... Whoa! I don't know, man. I really like Les Mis. Okay, Les Mis, I will say, is up there. I, Les Mis is a good contender, but I think for a modern audience, okay. Hamilton hits it hardest. With that criteria in mind, I If can, you're talking yeah. about, like, current audiences... Hamilton's, I, I think the best bar none. Yeah, I, yeah. Year of Hansen also really good, but like Hamilton had a way of combining somehow education, all this incredible like master class level stuff in, in in terms of the choreography and the singing, the the songwriting, the performances, and just this raw emotion and American story and bundling it all up in this rap hip hop package to deliver to these people that would have never listened to a musical before in their entire lives. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Hamilton was one of my first experiences with a musical, uh, just listening to it or, or just listening to the soundtrack and experiencing the story that way. And it brought so many new people into to theater that I think it deserves to, to have some sort of uh, commendation for that, some sort of appreciation for the way that it shaped modern theater in a way that I don't think any other show ever has. It's super, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I th it opened the audience up a ton. Uh, it was also probably one of my first one musicals that I actually tried to like, that I actually got into, you know. But I, mm -hmm. I kind of messed up my first time listening to it. I had it on shuffle, and oh uh, no! So what I had like the. Sin. I don't even know. How, it was an accident. So I don't even remember. But I, I but I tried to like extrapolate some story from my shuffled version of Hamilton, and then I decided. I really, you know, I realized my mistake and everything. So did you realize that it, did you think it wasn't shuffled and you were just listening to the songs in the correct order? Like Yes, I order? did. I, I had like, oh. I started with Alexander Hamilton and then it shuffled to Meet Me Inside. Um, uh, and I, was just, I was like, I was like what's yeah. going on here? Um, yeah, so I had an interesting first run in with Hamilton, but I, I, I realized my mistakes and I, I grow to love it. Honestly, Though, I, I noticed when I was watching it, I split it up. I watched Act 1 in one day and Act 2 in another, because it's just so long. Um, and I have very... Uh, my endurance is pretty low these days for that kind of thing. Um, 
I'm getting a little Hamilton burnout. I'm not going to lie. I like during some parts of act two and act, and even some parts of act one, I was just feeling the, I was getting a little tired. I don't know if that's just my uh, attention span going down. Cause I think everyone's attention spans going down, but I guess I've just heard these songs so much uh, to the point where it's kind of like just waiting to get to the next one that I really like, you know, cause, cause sometimes I see myself sitting through like a King George song or whatever. And I'm just like, all right, I get the gist here. Let's move along. I don't know. Have any of you guys experienced Hamilton burnout yet? No. Uh, um, <laughs> I wouldn't say with the musical directly. I feel like, having been like in show choir and having that be like a like there was because the year that it came out that was my my eighth grade year so my last year in choir so and we would have like these whatever banquet things where you just pick a song and we would sing it and i can tell you how many hamilton songs i had to sing for that showcase and I feel like after that, like, plus all of, like, the the memes of it, um, I kind of got a little burnt out. But I don't think I ever really stopped enjoying it. You know, like, yeah. even after, like, I can still put on the soundtrack. And when I was watching it, I was looking up everything, still knew all, like, all the words to the songs. And it's just like... yeah, yeah. yeah. A serotonin booster, low key. But I understand yeah, what yeah. you're saying that it. I I I enjoy it for sure. I don't get me wrong. Like I'm still a huge Hamill Hamill fan. <laughs> but <laughs> but I just like there are some parts of the show, some stretches of the show that I really really like, and then others where I'm just kind of like, eh, you gotta get through some of the less exciting to get to the more exciting, I guess. Um, because when you listen to something so much, I feel like you start to pick like little favorite bits and the other yeah. stuff stops having as, as big of an impact as it normally would um yeah i think perhaps the advantage for me and the reason i didn't get burned out is because i haven't listened to hamilton in like forever uh like, same, yeah i used to listen to it like every day for like like half a year or something mm-hmm. uh, like just in the car we'd have it as we go to and from school but i hadn't listened to it in forever so when i got like my experience with hamilton again like you know however long i watched the movie ago it was it was just like all of the the good feelings of all the songs came back to me but i can mm-hmm. totally imagine that if you were a part of a group that like in especially theater groups theater groups i will say get a little bit annoying when it comes to the music yes. like, yes. if you're within those groups and they're like constantly singing all that stuff then <laughs> obviously if you just keep repeating something it's going to get annoying no matter how good it is right mm-hmm. so yeah repetition is it, at the point that people do it with Hamilton can be infuriating. But I think if you experience it in perhaps the intended way, which is just, I don't know, watching it. One and done. Person, uh, yeah, one and done and like maybe listening to the soundtrack every now and again. Th- then yeah. you really don't get sick of it and you really like get to understand all of the mastery that's going on in every single song. Because I was thoroughly entertained the entire way through. But, you know, uh, I, I, mm. I had my break and it was like, it was like being addicted to crack, and then you take like a week break, I... and then you're back on crack. <laughs> I, you speak like good. you have some sort of experience. I experience uh, with it. You know, it's it's uh, it's a different podcast. We'll do it on Breaking Bad. Anyways, um, I was gonna, speaking of the whole like Hamilton fan craze and stuff. Have you guys seen like there's almost some backlash to Hamilton with like the current you know, political climate. Yes, I was um, going to bring that up. I wanted to talk about it because because I kind of, yeah. I kind of, like, I see what, you, okay, so the argument being put out is that Hamilton overly romanticizes the Founding Fathers and paints them as these super cool, like, rapping, these guys are cool, <laughs> awesome, great people that we should really like. And that's and that's not an accurate depiction, you know, these people were, had their bad sides too. And so people are therefore saying, we should cancel Hamilton and not uh, support it because it romanticizes these bad founding fathers. But I, I, I don't know. I disagree. I feel like Hamilton's done way more good than bad. Uh, but what are you guys' takes? I, hmm. I don't think it romanticizes them 
to the extent that some people think. I like honestly, every character in that show is pretty flawed. Like except for my baby Eliza. Except for my baby Eliza and George. Oh. Well, George, I was gonna say George. We. <laughs> I think the distinction you have to make here is you have to realize that Hamilton is fantasy. It's it's yeah. not it's it's, it's, it's not fiction. Real. It's not it's not an historically accurate to the degree that some people like to believe it is, right? You have to realize that this is a character, Thomas Jefferson, and not actual Thomas Jefferson. I feel like some people, especially people who don't, I guess, aren't like super into history usually outside of Hamilton, I feel like that line kind of starts to get blurred. But you need to be very firm in knowing that like this is a, it's cool that this is about history and there are some facts to be learned it is educational it helped mm -hmm. it helped me out it has helped it's come through before yep. <laughs> i will say that for sure but you have to remember that it's it's and it's not real you know and i feel like some people Wait. are forgetting that you know i, ha I actually have a, a perspective on this because for my eighth grade class i had to do this thing called history makers where i had to make a presentation about a specific history character and i chose hamilton uh because i was like the hamilton guy at our school and i got everyone hooked on it right uh and so, so I actually know a, fa a fairly good deal about his life, and I did an hour-long presentation accidentally on him. Mm -hmm. uh, the musical is fairly accurate in a lot of the the major events that it depicts. Actually, they are romanticized in that they're made. They're they have to be dramatized to be interesting characters, sure. you know. And I feel like people are forgetting that the historical he, content is there. Yeah, yeah. I think even in that dramatization. One of the things that Hamilton does best is it makes its main characters super mega flawed. Like Hamilton, all of the good things that you can say about him can easily be counted as bad things. Like he's a ambitious, he thinks his own way, he's headstrong. Like he literally cheated on his wife and then told the entire world about it. Who even does that? Like that's crazy. I still do not get the reasoning behind making the Reynolds pamphlet. <laughs> to this day, it doesn't make sense. Hurricane, I think, is a very good fictional reason why he did it. Uh, within the context of the play, obviously not historical. Hurricane does a phenomenal job of grounding it within, like, the story of Hamilton. Where yeah. it's like, his entire life, his his lifeline has been writing. It's the thing he can always fall back on, and he's so confident in his ability that he he feels like he can like be the greatest wordsmith and make anything go any direction he chooses because of the way he can write and sway the hearts and minds of people. But the cool thing about this show is that when he does cheat on his wife and the whole Reynolds pamphlet thing happens, he realizes that that skill is not infallible. Like he he can fail at writing and his and all of the good things about him can can tumble down and crumble into into this horrible mess of problems and issues. And he finally sees that when the Reynolds pamphlet, using his one, you know, incredible skill of writing, backfires on him entirely. And, yeah. he, and he's sadder than he thought. And now like his legacy is forever stained because of it. Mm -hmm. I, I think pride is like his, his, you know, his cardinal sin or whatever. Because like, like when Angelica mm -hmm. arrives, and he expects her to be on his side and all that. He's very prideful. The character, the fictional character of Hamilton that's been <laughs> created by Lin-Manuel Miranda Mm -hmm. is a is a prideful person I, and i'm not i don't know i'm not done with that that cancel thing irks me i i don't know why well i think it's more especially from what i've seen coming from um the black community because i've follow a lot of people who there are some people who are like okay this is stupid like there are other people that are like it is okay like we need to normalize like recognizing that people are bad but works about them can be perceived as good like we can understand that the founding fathers were not good people and still enjoy hamilton as a body of work and i feel like yeah. the most complaint for me is that they did not really address slavery as much as i guess they like should have you know like I yeah guess, like that's like a very like valid complaint i feel like out of all of the like problems with them but we also have to see like the good that hamilton did like by making all of the founding fathers people of color and um mm -hmm. kind of like flipping it on its head in that sense which was like i think was very very good and very like entertaining and that allowed him to kind of it was good but i feel like it also allowed him to kind of not have to address a lot of the issues 
like outside of that because i think the only the only specific one-liner that we get is during the cabinet battle um where yeah Hamilton, like calls out jefferson like oh da, 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 like we know who's really doing the planting and then of course we have the whole john lawrence um like he's fighting for slavery but after that like those two instances it really just kind of falls off and i was watching a um, video with Chris Jackson talking about kind of trying to get in to the character of Washington because as a black man getting into a role of a white man who was you know owned slaves were absolutely terrible to them and wasn't exactly the golden boy that it's been that he's been you know like idealized as you know and having to like find a happy medium i guess of being mm-hmm. okay with like knowing the truth about the characters but also portraying the characters in a way that is you know truthful to them and i feel like if chris jackson did it then like of course thomas like of course david diggs is going to do it at some point because thomas jefferson same thing you know and hey, he was prob- he, probably he, the, he worst was the worst of the worst no no yeah. here's he, of them yeah the the thing though is, is that like i i hear what you're saying and it, it it's true hamilton like the, the current musical as we know it does not really address slavery at all but what's kind of frustrating is that if you go back and listen to the demos which i've listened to which i've yeah which i've listened to of like earlier cuts of the musical that aren't the one we see on stage there's so much more about slavery there's a third cabinet battle all about like abolition and mm-hmm. and and all sorts of content about like this big american problem that got cut out from the final stage play for who knows why and it's yeah. really frustrating well, it's i like, think we know why but well, i mean we know but it's also like <laughs> oh you were so close like you had this stuff in there but you took yeah. it out then again it probably would have been like four hours at that point and that's just too yeah. much yeah. that's just too much musical man I mean, that's yeah. definitely one of the main reasons is that I think the the Hamilton they settled on, like some of the demo songs are super good, by the way. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I recommend you listen to the demo songs, even though Lynn's singing in that I will admit is not awesome. There's look all. up a uh, Google the Hamilton workshop if you're interested, because that is like the off broad the pre Broadway run. So yeah. it has the full mm-hmm. cast there. So you can actually hear the proper voices singing the parts, but it has all the cut songs in them. And it's super cool. Yeah, first but, burn is my jam by the way that, that one is, is super good i like the one ooh, where angelica so goes off on, on oh family. congratulations oh yeah congratulations yeah, so good uh but yeah as i was saying i think that a lot of the reason they cut out uh a, a bunch of the slavery commentary is probably because of time it also doesn't uh enter into hamilton's life as much as it does the other founding fathers that's, because Hamil- that's fair H- hamilton didn't own slaves like it at the core of it it's a musical about him and a lot uh, obviously slavery has always been a part of american history and every single issue like throughout all of american history can somehow be tied back to slavery or or black oppression or or anything like that but in hamilton's life specifically he didn't own slaves he fought against slavery uh he made it a, a a big deal to be on the right side of history as much as you could back then except so for- Except for cheating on your wife. Yeah, except for cheating on your wife. Cheating on your wife, I will say, is arguably better than slavery, though. Uh, The hot take. You know, (laughs) super hot take. I'm not not going to disagree. Obviously, both pretty bad. Both pretty bad, (laughs) yes. But, uh, yeah, I think that slavery might have possibly been a narrative that, that wouldn't have been able to fit in Hamilton in the way that we see it now you probably would have had to do some rewriting in terms of how it all ties together at the end for uh, any really substantial commentary on that to be made. But I think it's definitely a topic worth exploring in other musicals and works, and you should definitely educate yourself on it because it's in everywhere in America. Watch yeah. The Color Purple. Oh, I want to watch The Color Purple. Can we do color, the, the, the Color Purple one day? I think that'd With be super Cynthia fun. With Cynthia Arrivo. Socratic Ooh. Opera. We're now a musical podcast, everybody. <laughs> oh speaking of which can i hop in with the the tonys i know we're oh yeah far sure away from the tonys but it reminded me so 
Um, Hamilton at the 70th Tony Awards, which was in 2016, received the record setting 16 nominations in 13 categories and winning 11 of them. Jeez. That it was crazy. Hold on. Nominations. I mean, what was even challenging? <laughs> like, yeah, what else? I, I don't, I know the movies so much more than I know the musicals. I don't, because uh, musicals, I guess, premiere in a certain year, you know, like. I could not tell you any other musicals that aired in 2015. They got, well, the revival of Color Purple with Cynthia Arriva, which is what brought it up, was uh. up against it. So it won Best Musical, and then Leslie Odom Jr. got Best Leading Actor. Yes, sir. Renee Elise Goldsberry won Best Featured Actress. David Diggs won Best Featured Actor. They just... Sweet, they got everything. You know? They got everything. Best lighting, yeah. And they deserved it all. Like all of that stuff you hear and you're like, oh yeah, no, that was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah it seems like no brainers. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I want to hop back quickly on the ensemble uh, train that you were talking about, Casey, because the ensemble in that show, like people that like the show know the ensemble as well as they know some of the other. Yeah, I mm -hmm, realized yeah. that. I've seen all this buzz about the uh, the bullet, I think is what they're calling her. Or yeah. Like, the one who like symbolizes death. Mm -hmm. oh, she yeah. also she also plays Sally Hemings in that weird one liner. And what did I miss? Uh, I, I maybe oh, there's probably yeah, signif yeah. some significance to her. You know, the incarnation of death in the ensemble being Sally Hemings. That's a deeper discussion. Mm -hmm. it, it do be. It killed Jefferson's legacy. If anyone mm -hmm. has the bullet's number, though. Uh, and she's single, they give it to me. Just uh, probably oh, just a little really older than you. Yeah. Little, well, little. I think it's really cool though that the, that the ensemble got to shine in all the minor roles, like uh, Samuel Seabury mm -hmm. and Charles Lee and the uh, the guy who killed Philip. I think George it's Eaker. very yeah, George Eaker. George Eaker. I, I think it's very ironic that the guy who plays Philip Schuyler, uh, the Schuyler sisters' dad, also plays James Reynolds. I just thought mm -hmm. that was funny when I noticed that. I was like, oh, I see. Very, very ironic. Have the the father of your wife also be the husband of the person you're cheating with. Bro. Very clever, Lynn. Very clever. Yeah, no, there's tons of little details uh, like that in the musical. One of the biggest ones, biggest controversy. Uh, it's not really a controversy. It's what is... Uh, what is Eliza screaming at at the end? Is it is she oh. looking at the audience and seeing that that Hamilton's legacy was remembered, or is she just like dying and seeing Hamilton in the afterlife for the first time? Mm. I don't know. I kind of like the little meta fourth wall break idea where it's like she's seeing the audience. I think it's pretty clever. Um, that's my. I think it's the nice part is that a lot of it's up to interpretation. Um, yeah, but that's yeah. my inter. I. I choose to believe in the uh the meta ending <laughs> it's like oh. joker where it was all a dream oh Jeez. dude don't i don't even don't i haven't even thought about that movie that. in so long <laughs> oh Man. and for good reason because it wasn't as good as people say okay. i try to anyway <laughs> i can actually come around with you on that like i was thinking Thank about it the other day you. and i was like it was it was really good but i mean yeah, it was really good, but it's just like I have no desire there was, to watch. There's it again. better movies that year. No, I'd rewatch, but just I think there were better movies that year. Obviously, I, that was a to be fair stacked year for movies. I don't think we're ever Gosh, gonna see, or, 2019. It's like the I mean, one... we're definitely gonna see another year with good movies, but that was like once in a lifetime sort of. 2020 world. off to a rocky start with the movies. <laughs> hey, no, you got Scoob. That one's out there. You got uh, the the Onward? Trolls movie Onward. Onward was good. Uh, you know what's funny is that this this broadcast of Hamilton I think was supposed to come out in October, but they they yeah. scooted it up because of the Rona. You know, like give the people something to look forward to, and then which I can appreciate. 4th, they're like yeah. July third. That's when we'll do it. It's like no, you were one day off. Come on. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't just release it on July fourth. Um, but that's another question. Alex Lacamoire absolutely slapped with the music. I know, I guess he didn't write it. Lynn wrote it, but the music for- No, yeah. That's just so good. I, really cool. I can't even begin to explain it, you know? I'm just, I, 
the, the, the motifs, you know, I love my motifs and that's literally all the show is. It's like mm -hmm. seven songs and then they just chop them up and mix them together and mm -hmm. repeat them and they make an entire musical out of it. It's so impressive. Uh, it's what Les Mis does a lot too. Cause Les Mis is just like the same three songs over and over. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Pretty much. Ha Ham Hamilton's like, it's, it's like Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr, the Aaron Burr thing. Helpless, satisfied, ten dual command, and then they just take those songs and just that's then they just make the rest of the show with it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and right hand man, it's very efficient writing style. Like just write a fourth of your songs and then use it everywhere else. I like it, and it also makes for really good storytelling because like mm -hmm. you, it's really easy to identify with those little things. Like when. Uh, when Angelica walks in during the Reynolds pamphlet and you hear the little satisfied lick, you know, your brain knows, okay, Angelica's here. Or like George Washington has his little, uh, he has a motif that kind of sounds like the James Bond theme in Right Hand Man. I love it. It's so cool. I love the James Bond thing. Um, I could talk about this for, for so long, though. Nonstop. Nonstop is I love nonstop. a masterclass in how to write a musical song because nonstop is I'm convinced there's no original musical material in nonstop. It's entirely just other motifs. And it's like all of the other motifs we've seen throughout the first act. It's it's built around Aaron Burr's bass line. Uh, it also has Satisfied. It also has Helpless. It also has That Would Be Enough. It also has History Has Its Eyes on You. It has so many songs all in one, and, and they all are used in meaningful ways. It's just... It's too much for my little heart. I, I imagine having that huge of a brain to be able to do that. Because it's hard to make like two completely different songs sound good together. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that man does it. And I, this is only his like second musical, right? Because like In the Heights was his first third. big one. Third, oh, it's oh, his third one. Because you have 21 Chump Street. Oh, do we count yeah. that? It's like 15 Oh, did he write? Yeah, he wrote it. He wrote it. It's like okay. it's like twenty minutes. And oh, it's only oh, oh. baby boy Anthony Ramos is in there too. Yeah, twenty one Trump Street. There's interesting conversation to be had there. Sting operations are immoral. I've decided. True. Um, really, you think stings are immoral? Let's talk no, about. There's like it's a. I think it's what is it called? Entrapment. I think it's entrapment. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. College board. No, I'm kidding. Where it's well, like. <laughs> Where it's like a specific sting where like you basically set someone. I mean, all stings are like you're setting someone up, but it's like you have way more of a hand of yeah, like, like you setting make them up. You make them commit a crime and then you arrest them for that crime. <laughs> yeah. And you're it's like, like dude, gotcha. what? <laughs> Let's have a like, conversation what? about ethical police tactics in a cab. The, oh, at, the very, at the five last minutes of this episode. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> what a time to broach that topic. Um, Jeez. Gosh, but dude, that's one hell of a uh, that's one hell of a title. I think I'm just gonna write that a cab in Hamilton. Bam, <laughs> that's so <laughs> clickbait though, because we like don't talk about it. Don't talk oh, about we just it. talked about it right now. It's perfect. Wait, whatever happened to the uh in the Heights movie? Is that a? It, oh, it's I coming out. I'm so hyped all dude. the I'm way so back. Hyped. But because it was supposed to come out like a while ago. Yes, it was supposed it, to come out. I am so upset. It's it. so I I'm excited fine. for that one because it's Anthony Ramos as well. Uh, playing mm. yeah Usnavi. sure is and it looks like they're taking a very like amazing are you yeah spike lee approach like sort of dreamlike in a bunch of different cases it looks it looks yeah. super creative i mean I it's I... same setting ish mm -hmm. oh yeah it is huh Do a right friend thing. of mine saw the movie early she saw like a, a, a test bronx. screening what? <laughs> she said it was so good i've never listened to in the heights so i'm really excited for this movie <gasps> i oh, i love it. i I'm wary of musical movies now, ever since Cats and writing an essay about it. So, oh, I'm, don't. but you know, someone in the comments oh. actually the other day was like, I'm excited to see what you think about In the Heights because that one looks like uh, it'll be done right. There have I been know, are you, yeah. Go ahead. Are you just going to become our de facto talk about musical movie man? Because I'm fine with that. I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't. Can I take that on on top of Spider Man man? And I, I just, I don't know. We can split uh, it, James. I'll talk split, about musicals. Let's split the share I think the world. We all like musicals here. It's just like which is I, good. I'm glad we all like musicals. I hate people that 
not hate. Hate's always a strain. No, I hate. I hate people who <laughs> who dislike an entire form of entertainment just because. And like, like without giving it a shot ever. That's I've noticed yeah. that too. There's just such a strong musical theater prejudice. It's like people think it's not mad, like it's childish or it's not like mad. You can't listen to it and be a man. I don't know. It's weird. Well, um, I understand it for for some musicals because there's definitely a, a musical theater like voice and tone yes. that is in Way a whole lot of musicals. But it's like it's not fair to to say that an entire like medium is bad because there's a couple cliche you know things within it like hamilton yeah. i think definitely breaks the mold on that hamilton sounds like no other musical like ever like les mis i think is also a great example that's a really standout musical it's just finding like what you like within the medium and then yeah. enjoying that I, I, but you can you can apply that school of thought to so many different things these, these days in this political climate but <laughs> But you know, James is the registered angry old man of the show. Uh, he, <laughs> I he's just, also taking that title on. I just, you know. yeah, I just don't like people who can't uh, can't get outside of their own little box. You know, get out there. It's a big yeah. wide world. Lots One of, of the there. the biggest things I see that in is like musical genres or or genres of music. I should say genres of music. Like there's people that hate country. Listen, there are good country songs out there. There's people that, are, that, that hate rap. There are good rap songs he out there. Laughs nervously. True. No, okay. The thing about country, I don't know about country, but like Western, like yeah. West, West, like I don't know how to describe the vibe. Think like um, Cowboys, Cowboys. Yeah. like Hurt by Johnny Cash or like. Yeah, that's totally country. Valley of Dark, you know, not country like back of my truck, country like lone desert wanderer you know that's my mm -hmm. vibe so i can dig but yeah i think i mean there's probably at least one song that i like in every genre you know you, you don't mm -hmm. close yourself don't close yourself off to stuff guys yeah, and guys people out there if you've made it this far especially yeah, with yeah. new emerging genres like uh if i can speak to anything it's that vr experiences are going to be one of the coolest things coming out once they get cheaper like always be prepared to 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 like get on the back of these new genres super quick so that you can see that you were there and then you can call everyone else bandwagoners because that's super fun to do. It's pretending like you're better than people because you got there first. So with VR, guys, I'm telling you, hop on that train and then you can call everyone else a bandwagoner. Yeah, just shell fun. out your eight hundred dollars for a plastic Oculus Rift. Exactly. Super worth exactly. No, but they have like these new experiences that you can go to where they put you in a room, right? And they give you a VR backpack so there's no wires like tangling up the floor. Oh, or yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like a 20 minute like playable movie essentially. Yeah, it's like, a, it. it's like a movie game. It's so much fun. Like once that gets cheap and it's not expensive for like, you know, 10 minutes of fun or whatever, huge, humongous. It's Come almost on. as inaccessible as musical theater. Exactly. <laughs> oh, tying it back. Very good, James. I know. I got to reel you guys in. I guess I was part of the problem there. You guys, I would like uh, to. Charlie's the guy. Charlie's the guy. He's, <laughs> miss, he's always Mr. Tangent. I love I'm erasing tangents. myself from the narrative. Oh, I didn't Hi. even want to. I did Hi. not even want to get in to burn and Quiet Uptown. That's like one Ooh. of Quiet Uptown is one of the only like pieces of media that has ever made me cry. Really? It, it is just so something about like the concept of like parent losing a kid that's the dynamic that always hits me no mm -hmm. i don't like i don't care if boyfriend loses girlfriend or whatever but like the the paternal relationships are always what gets me <laughs> not not necessarily paternal i mean i mean parental is is always what hits me it's gonna say uh, are you projecting a bit james or i just... maybe i don't know <laughs> I, I have like a deep freudian fear of i don't who knows but just something about parent children death is the ones that always get me the most sad and i can't can't explain it but i've noticed that trend and it's good to be aware of yourself i did my soul searching there yes james uh. this is a podcast not only about three people arguing about movies it's also about learning about each other and growing closer as friends Aww. and i think the real musical was the friends we made along the way <laughs> I don't.
can you put that at the head like that's our tagline the real musical is the friends we made along the way i think that's i will do because speaking of which we are running out of time on the clock my apple's uh what's what's the word for that stopwatch it's getting a little high guys so we're gonna have to wrap it up pretty pretty quick here Uh, yikers does anyone have a final word to say about hamilton before we sign off watch it that's yeah, it. If, you, if you have Disney Plus, why not see what the buzz is about? Yeah, yeah. get a uh, a uh, a legal copy too. That works. Just j- j- just like listen to it. Just experience Hamilton. It's it's a hundred percent worth it. Like honestly. Just... And you know what? If you don't like it, at least you can say you tried it. And, exactly. And you... Exactly. That's the beauty of it. Is right. And Even then if you don't like it, you can argue with your f- your friends that love it and make them really really mad. <laughs> There's and always then... an upside. Always Look for the up. positive. Look for the positive exactly. people. So if you enjoyed, spread the word. Uh, let people know. We'd love to get new listeners, spread our ideas to new people, hear ideas from new people. Meeting new people is great. So we'd love it if you would share this with your friends or family. Make sure you follow us on social media, like Instagram at Socratic Cinema or Twitter at Cinema Socratic or Twitch. It's all pretty much the same name. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you again so much for listening. Let us know if you enjoyed it. Let us know if you didn't enjoy it. Tell it. T- tell us how to improve. You tell us. We need to communicate if we're going to have a, a lasting relationship here, dear viewer. Um, yeah, I think that's that's. I've made my piece there. Uh, so with that out of the way, I'm going to say it one more time. Share the show. And now I'm going to say that we've been Socratic Cinema. Uh, Adios. Adios.